Hey everybody, welcome back to HPC Tech Shorts, the engineering water cooler here in AWS. Today is part two of our discussion with Brian Loyal talking about protein folding. Brian is our global expert on protein folding and he's a senior solution architect in our healthcare AIML team. In the first episode, he gave us a, a high school biology refresher, which was super helpful to me to understand the context of where protein folding fits into this universe. Uh, but today, He's going to dive into the solution that he built, the open source solution that he built, and the comparison that he did between AlphaFold and OpenFold. I hope you get a lot out of it. We'll jump straight into the discussion with him now. Yeah, so one of the other kind of effects of the success of AlphaFold has been just the amount of research and new development on these, these new algorithms. So here's just a subset. If you've been following the, the science last couple of months, um, there's a whole bunch of these new folds which have come out. So Colab fold, Helix fold, Unifold, Rosetta fold, NA, Open fold. What we're seeing is that uh, there's not just one tool uh, that's useful for all of these different tasks. We're quickly growing a, a toolbox of a variety of algorithms that are all kind of fit for purpose. They seem to have advantages for certain types of proteins, certain types of problems. Um, and this is fantastic because now we have you know a, a better tuned set of tools for protein analysis. But it's also just a lot to keep track of. It's there's new papers every week. Um, there's some stuff that came out this week that I've been I've been reading up on that's really exciting. So it's a nice problem to have. But the researchers that I've talked to say this is a real problem. How do we experiment with these tools? How do we apply them and make sure that they work? Imitation is the best form of flattery, as they say. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So, you know, when we, um, when we came and talked early this spring, we had talked about how uh, a group at AWS had looked into different ways of running AlphaFold uh, on our technologies. And, and we presented a way of using AlphaFold on AWS Batch, which is our, you know, one of our big HPC services, um, to run it more efficiently. Uh, since then, we've been working on expanding that to include other algorithms as well, um, really recognizing that this is a growing field and we want to support all these different types of tools. And so what we came up with was an architecture that, that looks just like this. So again, the idea is that we can take what we've learned from running AlphaFold on AWS Batch, and we can apply it to a, a variety of other algorithms as well. And the first one that we have looked at, um, like, you, like we said earlier, is something called OpenFold. Now, OpenFold was developed by a team at Columbia University, and it is a, a fully open source protein folding algorithm that was really optimized to run on commonly available GPUs. So you don't need to have some, you know, fancy, hard to find hardware to run open fold at scale. Your, your standard NVIDIA GPUs will handle it, handle it just fine. Yeah. And in running this, what we have found um, is uh, a couple things. So first off, it's really accurate. It's a really great option for researchers who are looking to get high quality structure predictions. We actually used a, a, a grouping of just over 30 proteins in what's called the Cameo data set, which is a, a really a, a quality control check for researchers. Uh, and we saw that the um, the accuracy of the open fold predictions was really close to the alpha fold predictions, um, which is good to see because they were trained totally separately, different teams, um, different data, but they still got really high quality results, which is like what we want to see. But um, one of the advantages to using something like OpenFold is because it is so highly optimized for GPUs, like the ones that we run on, on AWS, mm -hmm. is the performance is a lot, a lot faster. So OpenFold is, is more than 90% faster than, than AlphaFold. Um, a couple of reasons for this. AlphaFold, um, you know, in addition to being a couple years old, was um, includes a what they call a pre-compilation step. AlphaFold runs a bunch of models in series. OpenFold just has the, just has the one. Um, but that optimization for for GPUs plays a big role, and that's something that we've seen in in our testing as well. And what that means, I think, for for most folks that are using this in a laboratory, like a bioinformatician or research team, this comes down to cost. You know, if you're looking at the runtime of a process, this means that you can save a, a lot of resources by using an alternative algorithm like OpenFold versus something like AlphaFold. And, and I mean, of course, in a normal scientific context, you know, once you reduce the cost of something, that means you can do more of it, and you end up exploring a larger, larger problem space. So that's yeah, absolutely a good outcome of this as well. So here are some examples of like some of that extra work that can be done now. So we've made this more accessible. Um, it's easier to get started in this field. There are researchers out there doing a lot of really cool new stuff with this in addition to just protein folding. Um, one example is like sequence property prediction. So I have like 
a protein sequence. Maybe I can do things like predict how it will um, interact during the uh, you know the drug manufacturing process or how stable is it going to be. There's been a team at Meta that's done some really cool work with that. Um, some other cool work being done, especially at teams like the um, the Institute of Protein Design at the University of Washington, they've been experimenting with: can you take a a, a known structure or like a backbone structure and then go the other direction, actually predict the sequence from that? And that you might be asking yourself, like, why do we care about that? But that's a great way of doing what's called protein design. So maybe we say, like, we need a protein that looks kind of like this because it interacts with a molecule. Um, give me the sequence of that protein so I can synthesize it and turn it into a therapeutic. A lot of really cool, exciting stuff going on in that direction as well. Wow. Um, so, I mean, this is, uh, this, this, we're kind of just scratching the surface now, aren't we? Absolutely. Yeah. Like, this is, I mean, be- this idea of like using artificial intelligence to analyze proteins and design proteins is, is really exciting because what it means, again, is that we can create these kind of therapeutics. We can understand processes about the body um, and we can do so in a way which allows um, a lot of different types of teams to get involved. And, and when I look at this as a, as a solutions architect at AWS, I mean, my goal is to make this as easy and, and accessible as possible. Uh, and I think we're moving in that direction. I, I think you are because, uh, you know, not only is OpenFold open source, but you've also open sourced the actual solution that you guys built for, you know, for deploying AlphaFold and OpenFold. So, the, so the, that architecture that you showed earlier, you've open sourced that, right? And it's up on GitHub for people to use. Yeah, we've been calling it the the AWS architecture for protein folding and design. And so um, it is on Elegant GitHub. Elegant name. Does it have Well, a thank you. Name? Yeah, you know, <laughs> it really rolls off the tongue. It is, it is open source. It's under uh, Apache 2. So if you want to give it a go in your own account, feel free to, to download it, spin it up. What we say is that you can get the entire infrastructure set up in about 30 minutes. Um, it takes a few hours to download all the data that you need after that. Um, but, you know, let it run overnight. By the next morning, you can be up and running with some, uh, with some protein folding algorithms. And, this and, is- and yeah, we have a blog about it too. Right. And so, and so, in fact, and so, in fact, this is the blog post that you guys posted you know, like I think it was last week. And this has got the architecture we're talking about. Uh, it's got some of the details about how, how to actually establish this and set it up. And then, of course, you've gone through and some of those some of those data about the comparisons are there um, and access to the, you know, to the data sets and, and stuff. So this is quite a good paper because it describes everything that you guys did to do the comparison and how people can actually go and do it themselves if they if they're interested. Yeah, we did this testing with the team over at at Columbia University, and I think it highlights the value of being able to run a lot of these different types of algorithms on the same architecture. So you can do comparisons like this really easily. Um, Today, we support AlphaFold, AlphaFold Multimer, uh, and OpenFold, Um, but we are looking to add to this. So, you know, the... the, um, the question I always have for, for folks in the space is if you think there's an algorithm which would be especially useful to you or to the community, uh, send us a note. Drop us an issue on the GitHub repository. We're looking for uh, new useful tools to add to the stack. That's a super cool way to end the discussion. Let's find you more work to do. Uh, yeah. I love it. <laughs> All right. This is, this is really neat. Um, I, you know, I had, a, I had a conversation with a, a friend of mine at a conference in, in Italy back in the summer. Uh, he's a material scientist. He's developing a whole pile of uh, machine learning methods for actually predicting the properties of materials based on, you know, but just based on the, uh, 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 based on molecular structures. He's got same kind of motivation as you, but he's looking for super strong forms of steel or um, bits of, you know, uh, new forms of plastic uh, that have got, you know, fire resistant properties and all sorts of other stuff. So this is, this is, this is the start of something pretty interesting. I feel like we're, well, it feels like we're in the middle of something big, but I, I think it's just the beginning. Yeah, I think we're just starting out. It's exciting. It is. All right. So uh, if anybody wants to reach out to you, they can come and find you on the GitHub. They can cut a GitHub issue to you. Yep. Um, thanks for coming along today and showing us this. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Booth. And before we go, if anybody out there has got some ideas about future topics you want to see us cover on Tech Shorts or if you want to see Brian come back and deep dive into a particular area that he, that he uh, didn't talk about today, uh, come and find us on Twitter. Our DMs are open. Until next time, thanks, Brian. Bye, everyone.